we're all in this fight together and we have to stick together and, and, and I guess keep that sort of team mentality and help each other out. It's all the same stuff I was saying during the convoy. Welcome back to Northern Perspective, everyone. I'm Cypher. And I'm Fox. It is such a pleasure to be here with Tamara Leach today. And it's the first time we're all meeting face to face. Uh, we're just all so, so excited. Unfortunately, I won't be able to participate in this interview because uh, our son is here too. And of course, he's also excited to meet Tamara. And he's so excited. I don't think he's going to be able to sit still and stay quiet for the interview. So we're going to go and uh, explore the grounds of the hotel. So that'll just leave Tamara and I, and uh, let's get into it. All right. <laughs> Long time coming. <laughs> Welcome back to the show, Tamara. And it's so great to actually sit here with you. We're at Tamara's hotel, and uh, she is uh, in between events uh, right now with Rebel, uh, Rebel News. And uh, she was gracious enough, enough to actually let us come and pay a visit and meet her in person and can't tell you fox and i are just so thrilled to be able to see her in person and uh thank you so much for coming on the show <laughs> it's, it's my pleasure and my honor to meet you guys i was actually messaged clyde uh this morning or last night and said i was fangirling a little bit <laughs> <laughs> oh, so real it's a real pleasure and i'm so happy to be here with you yeah it's it's so strange uh for everybody watching um, you know, we are big fans uh, of Tamara and, you know, maybe fans are not, is not the right word. Supporters, uh, mm. is probably the right word because she is literally fighting the fight of every Canadian that is, that, that values their freedom of speech, that values their right to protest mm -hmm. and that thinks that they have a voice to be able to use when a corrupt government is running this country. And, you know, Tamara is taking on all of that weight for all of us uh, with this unjust fight that she's being put through. And as I said it before, you were doing it with such grace oh, thank you. and such poise and whether that is what's actually going on underneath all of the <laughs> armor that you put on, uh, that's what you portray. And, uh, uh, so we are such supporters of yours. So it's it's very weird, everybody, to, to, for Tamara to say to us that she's fan curling over us. So. <laughs> yeah. But anyhow, um, so it's been uh, it's been I think since December since you were on the show last, mm -hmm. um, and we talked about the trial. Um, from our perspective, that continues to go well. Um, why don't you tell us about the recent development that happened on Wednesday? Yes, well, we the evidentiary portion of the trial is concluded, and so we have asked the judge to drop the no contact order between Chris Barber and myself. We haven't been able to sit in a room together, talk to each other on the phone, um, or text, anything like that, unless we've had counsel present. So a big, long two-year timeout, basically. And so Wednesday, uh, the judge ruled uh, to drop it. So, yeah, Chris came up to Medicine Hat. He only lives a couple hours away from me. And we got to hang out for the first time in a very long time. That must have been something. Is that since the convoy? Yeah. Well, we've seen each other since at events and stuff right. where other lawyers are present. But we've never been able to sit down and have a conversation, just the two of us, you know. And, and I think that's... That's so important. Like, I'm still not allowed to talk to Danny Bulford. I'm still not allowed to talk to Tom Marazzo. And I really look forward to that day because we ha have not had our moment to all come together and debrief or decompress or talk about all the things that happened and that have happened since. You know, we haven't had that, what would you call it, like a decompression visit. And so we, I feel like we were kind of robbed of that. So it was very nice. For sure, because... It was the, the. I would say that the convoy hadn't even really ended when you were, on, in my opinion, unlawfully arrested, mm -hmm. and so you didn't even get to celebrate the conclusion of that with them. And so, yeah, yeah I, I agree. I would call that theft mm -hmm. of, of that, of that camaraderie and that experience with them. So, mm -hmm. well, one step at a time, as I'm sure you've been seeing through this, um, and. 
So what's what is next in in your fight in in this trial? What comes next? Well, we're going to my legal team and myself are going to ask the crown to drop some more conditions. Like I was just referring to Danny and Tom, um, they did lift my social media condition, but even that came with conditions. I'm still have to be careful about what I talk about online and posts that I like and stuff like that. So I'm really hoping we can get the bulk of them removed anyways and then we'll go back to trial in august we have three days booked in the middle of august we're trying to get the week after that secured so that we can just completely wrap up we'll have some uh, submissions and closing arguments and then she'll go away and make her decision and i think um you know tamara and i have talked a little bit off camera about this as, as i'm sure all of you have been talking amongst yourselves i don't think there's any reasonable outcome other than the fact that this just goes away and you you receive a a a not guilty or not responsible verdict mm -hmm. from from the judge and hopefully that makes a lot of these other issues go away at that point mm -hmm. uh, and then you can be free and clear um, and god yeah it, it must drive whether it's Trudeau or the Liberals or whoever it is, it must drive them nuts to see that this is an outcome that's coming because um, it, it really felt like they were they were punishing you and Chris for essentially the the actions of tens of thousands of Canadians, and they they said, you know what, you were the ones that stood stood in front of the camera, we're going to pick on you, mm -hmm. and then you hear Trudeau stand up with all of the protests going on now talking about oh it's really valuable that people have the right to protest and um never mind you know there's there's threats of violence there's actual violence and none of that existed at the convoy no so um it is it, it's it's i think the irony is palpable just with all of that going on right now and you'll you'll have a vindication uh, mm. over over this ruling that's coming so in terms of in terms of what's going on in the the rest of politics, the Conservatives obviously have a 20-point lead. Um, Trudeau and the Liberals are resorting to the age-old playbook of the Liberals, which is attacking the, the Conservatives on the right to choose. We don't have any worry that Canadians are going to fall for that. Good. But what, is, um, what seems to be concerning um, some people is they're within the conservative circles or within the circles of people that are supporting the conservatives, there seems to be some, some fracturing going on. Um, and I wanted to talk about that a little bit because it's important for everybody to understand that this is a long game. This is not something that is, is going to is going to conclude within a week, a month, or even a year. Um, we may have to wait for an election next year. Um, what what have you seen in terms of you know some of this fracturing and and how important is it um, that people need to keep their eye on the ball here? Mm -hmm. Well, it, it's the utmost importance and. Obviously, I'm dealing with the same type of things in our own movement, which uh, I really hate the term freedom movement, but... Um, and even, uh, you know, when we were in Ottawa, that happened, you know, there was infighting happening. And I mean, there were so many people there. Of course, we're not all going to get along. And that's all I wanted. It's like, we don't have to like each other. We don't have to all have the same ideology or the same beliefs or the same values. Let's keep our eye on the prize. That's what Chris always said. Eye on the prize, guys. And, and for me, saving Canada is the prize. That is the prize. And I don't, whether it's in politics or, you know, what I'm involved in or, or any other type of organization or movement, you know, we have to drop our egos. We have to drop our egos and figure out a way to work together to save Canada. And we have to do it quickly. And so even within the conservative movement, yes, I mean, the same thing applies. Drop your egos and let's figure out a way to fix the problems that we have, you know? Yeah, I agree. Um, because e even like you and I won't agree on everything. Mm -hmm. You're going to have certain beliefs that, you know, don't align with mine. That's part of being human. Yeah. Uh, and part of being Canadian isn't defining what makes us different. It's 
celebrating what what makes us the same. Yes. Uh, and people really need to remember that. We used to be a nation like that. Yes. And I guess the message is, is don't let don't let the division of this prime minister and don't let the division mm -hmm. of the far left ideologues tear you away from what you're you were born with as a Canadian or even what you immigrated to Canada with because there's so many productive immigrants mm -hmm. um, that are just phenomenal people and they've embraced our culture yeah um, some of them I've, I've seen be quote unquote more Canadian than, than some of the Canadians here. Yes, that's very true. Yeah, they take it very seriously. I mean, that's one of the things that I heard from when we were in Ottawa and since, you know, Canadians come up to me and they thank us and they shake our hands and they hug us. And But it was the, the our immigrant population, our, our new Canadians or even Canadians that have been here for decades that were so the look of desperation in their eyes and gratitude because they came from these countries and they came here and they've worked hard and and to see this happening I mean it's, it'd be like watching it in slow motion happening all over again here for them and that and they were terrified you know that that's what they they escaped in a lot of cases and so to come here set up a life get a job raise a family and then to start seeing all this coming in incrementally again you know they were sounding the alarm bells long before most canadians even recognized what was happening and yeah i, I mean it's just hard to articulate the looks on their faces uh like i said it, it was just so much gratitude but also so much desperation you know yeah, and to your point, um, we 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 get emails, we get comments um, from people that are from, you know, dictatorship countries, communist countries, and they come to Canada to get away from that. And and to your point, they're saying these are the signs that mm -hmm. what they're starting to do is what I was trying to get away from. Please, somebody listen to me. You know, yeah. that's 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 what they're saying. And you know, and to the people saying, well, I don't trust Pierre, I don't trust the conservatives. You don't have to trust them. Yeah. Um, but what you do have to do is take a look at the political parties and find the one that seems to be making the most sense. Yes, that's right. And if that is the Liberal Party, if that is the, the ND Party, that's your God-given right as a Canadian. I'm not going to, to disparage you for, for thinking that, for voting that way, as long as you've taken a good, hard look at that. Because that's what you're supposed to do as a voter. Yes. Uh, it's not just voting, well, I have always voted liberal, so I'm going to vote liberal. Or I've always voted conservative. Or I hate the way Trudeau looks, so I'm going to vote conservative. That's not why you should be voting. The hard part, I think, for a lot of what I find anyways, is that when it comes to voting, getting out and voting or supporting a party, I mean, we're known as very passive people. We are. Almost to a fault. Like, I mean, look at our voter turnouts. And a lot of that now, I realize, is because people just don't know who to vote for. They, a lot of people that I speak to feel very politically homeless. And, you know, I, I like Pierre Polyev. I, I, he's articulate. He's incredibly smart. I love watching him in question period. Um, you know, because he asks these brilliant questions and then gets word salad answers constantly. And he just, he just can make them look so terrible, you know. And, um, but for, for the party as a whole, remember, when the convoy started, Although the Conservatives were the official opposition, they were, there was no opposition. Right. The Freedom Convoy became the official opposition. So do I have concerns about the Conservative Party? Of course I do. But at the end of the day, and I don't mean this specifically in Pierre's uh, circumstance, but I have kind of a joke that I've made for the last 15 years. When it comes to Canadian politics, it always feels to me like we're voting for who we think is going to do the least amount of damage or who the best candidate of, of the worst of them is, you know? So we'll see. And, uh, I mean, it was no different than when Danielle Smith was elected in Alberta. Right. A lot of people had trepidation and they didn't know what to expect. And I'll say the same thing about Pierre. We have to give him a chance. Like we have to, we definitely need the change and we have to let him 
get up there and do his thing. And hopefully he is the person that a lot of us want to believe that he is. Right. But I mean, that's where people like you and a lot of the influencers and streamers um, will come in to keep them accountable. Right. And, um, you know, everyone usually likes joining our, our late night committee live streams. Um, we'll, we will continue to do uh, committee live streams when the conservatives are in because we want to show everybody how the conservatives operate when they are in power. Yes. And if there is hypocrisy from what they're saying now versus what they say when they're in government, we will call it out. And yeah. um, we have said as much to Mr. Larry Brock. We, we told him that. So I'm, I'm sure he's going to remember that. He is a... Uh, a very upstanding gentleman from mm -hmm. what we've, what, from what we've, uh, yes. what we've experienced. And is Pierre going to make state, mistakes? Yeah, absolutely. Why? Because he's human. That's right. He's, and he's surrounded himself with good people. I mean, you have to look at that too, and because that, that's a big part of it. Who, who you have supporting you and helping you and having your back is really important. So if, for me anyways, I won't speak for anyone else, but for when I look at the, uh, the people that he's surrounded himself with um, in the shadow cabinet compared to the caucus that we have, I mean, there's just, the separation is incredible, you know? Yeah, we've often uh, talked about the fact that Trudeau has surrounded himself with weak people, so there is no threat to his leadership. It's a wedding party. Right. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> you know. Whereas Pierre, he seems to have surrounded himself with specialists. Yes. And I'm not going to say I don't have any doubt, but I will say I have confidence that if Pierre starts to stray off the path, there's going to be people like Michael Cooper mm -hmm. and Larry Brock Larry and Brock. Michael Barrett yeah. that will speak up and say, Pierre... Get back on the line. Yeah. And I don't think Pierre will do it maliciously. I think it's, you can get distracted and you can, you can not have your eye on that prize. So, mm -hmm. um, but Pierre's going to be judged by his scandals or non-scandals. Yeah. To your point, you have to give him the opportunity to succeed or, or fail. But I think he's going to end up doing a lot of good in this country. So what do you, uh, what's next for you for, for the summer? Busy. <laughs> uh, I, I was basically gone from home for about three weeks. I did a little book signing tour through Saskatchewan, and then my daughter had a baby, so I have a new baby granddaughter. Oh, wow. So I was uh, visiting her in Manitoba for a couple of weeks and then flew out here. Uh, Dwayne and I are coming back at the end of the month. We got some fundraisers to do for Dan Hartman. Um, that's a biggie. Jay Vanderweer, Jay from the Shed, who was just found guilty on two counts of mischief from the convoy. Um, and his was an interesting case and an interesting decision. So we're going to come back and I, it's just really important to me. And through the whole thing, through the whole convoy and ever since, it's been very important to me and Chris that no one gets left behind. And so it makes me emotional. Because Chris and I are so lucky that we have like organizations like uh, the JCCF and the Democracy Fund helping us fund our legal fees because... I'm up just about to a half a million. There's no way I could have afforded that. And I just feel like I'm so very blessed. And so to come and help, you know, Chaba, VZ, um, Harold Jonker, any of Jay or, or any of them, you know, we, we're all in this fight together and we have to stick together and, and, and I guess keep that sort of team mentality and help each other out. It's all the same stuff I was saying during the convoy, right? We have to look after each other and we have to take care of each other. And, and the irony is we have to raise money for all these legal defenses to defend against people that are using ta our taxpayer money to fight us and put us in jail. You know, so it's really important to me. Uh, I know it's important to Chris that we that we get out here and help as many people as we possibly can. So I'm really looking forward to that. And plus, they're always great events. It's really great. It's almost like little mini reunions, right? And just the camaraderie and the love and the support. I, it's like a little injection of hope and love again, I guess. And so we're going to be busy doing stuff like that. Um, there's the We Unify conference I'll be speaking at in June. Dwayne and I are going to play a couple music festivals. And um, hopefully I'm going to get a couple weeks off in July to go do some fishing. <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll be back uh, in Ottawa in August. So. So, yeah, you are busy. Yeah. But, um, you know, I think that just goes to, you know, you, you wanting to continue to help everybody else in that fight 
it just comes back to you. That's that's what Canadians do. Yes. Um, and as we keep saying, that's that's what Team Canada means. Team Canada isn't hockey. It isn't soccer. It isn't lacrosse. Team Canada should be a way of life in this country, and we need to get back to that. Yes. And with that, thank you very much to Marlich for joining you. us. Thank you. My pleasure. So thank you for having me.